The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. How is everyone today? It's a beautiful day here in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to our webinar on executive strategies. I hope you've enjoyed our brief slideshow. Everyone is in listen-only mode right now. If you do have a question, as usual, you may type it in the question pane or send me a chat message. We'll be sure and get all questions answered. And I believe we're about ready to get started. Hang on one second, check with Duff. Okay, we are ready to get going. I am pleased to introduce Duff Swain, president of TrendCon Group. He will be doing our presentation today on executive strategies. If you'll bear with me one second, I'm going to make him the presenter. Thank you, Lisa, and welcome to our program. We're going to talk about laying the foundation for business intelligence and improved profitability. It's a big topic, and I hope we are able to supply you with some information that will be worthwhile. Um, as Lisa said, uh, my name is Duff Swain, uh, TrendCon Group. Obviously, this is March 19th. Hope everyone had a good St. Paddy's Day a couple of days ago. Uh, just a very brief introduction, if this is your first time, as to who we are. Uh, we're TrendCon Group. Uh, we are a technology and advisory company with offices in Columbus. And for a long, long time, we've been specializing in the transportation industry. Uh, in fact, you know, since 92. We've uh, been at this quite a few years. Uh, we have a reputation for helping companies, both with uh, their cost and the tech associated technology, and also as an advisory company, helping companies solve really critical problems that oftentimes threaten their business. So what we've been doing over the years, uh, essentially what we did is we started as an advisory company uh, in 1983, uh, actually in 82, in 1983, uh, came to realize that trucking companies did not understand their costs. They couldn't tell the difference between uh, an owner-operator trip and a company trip or a 500-mile trip that took a day versus a day and a half. So we, uh, we developed uh, an Excel-based, activity-based costing program based on my experience in manufacturing at that time. And in 2011, uh, it evolved from the analysis tool that we used in our advisory practice into a very powerful web-based software called Troop Costing. Okay? And, um, so with that in mind, that's a little bit about who we are. And uh, we're here to talk about is, is laying the foundations for business intelligence and improved profitability and productivity. Okay? So uh, with that in mind, our, our agenda is pretty much like this. Uh, it boils down to understanding your costs and how you use business intelligence to do that uh, in order to get the kind of pricing, the results that you need. Uh, we're going to talk about improving Truck productivity, which is your key key tool to increase your profitability and, and what that impact is. So we're trying to help you lay a foundation for a profitable growth of this program. Uh, just you know a little bit more about us at this particular point than we know about you. We've got some polling questions periodically, and these next ones are to help us better understand uh, who's in the audience. So, so Elise is going to open the polls, and we're going to ask you to answer these questions, okay, using Okay, we have a uh, quite a mixture here of, you know, both uh, primarily refrigerated and and, uh, and flatbed, okay, that's cool, all right. So let's move on to the next poll. Tell us what type of motor carrier you are. Okay. I, I guess you know, I guess that's a little bit redundant. It's your fleet size that I'm after. A 
mixture of everyone, and very small, to some pretty good sized wheats out there. Okay, that's very interesting. That's good. Good, good, a good mixture. Okay, so now what we'd like to know is what type of uh, equipment do you operate? Well, we've got you know primarily company trucks and a mixture of company and owner operators. Okay, very good, excellent. Um, so, just want to move on here and essentially talk about some of the things going on in the industry. You know, a little commentary to set the stage on this thing. Uh, and and these are some of the things that we see in the marketplace. Uh, they're very perplexing. Okay, you know, it has an awful lot to do with mindset and how we've been used to running our businesses in the past and the difficulty in changing. I guess, you know, the one right up front that continues to stump me is how you can manage your business if you don't understand your costs. And on one hand, you know, because I've been at this so long, I've come to realize we've gotten used to doing this. You know, you've gotten used to running your businesses, you know, and gut feel, and, you know, well, we've done this before, and we made money at this, and we made money at that. But the fact is, you know, the vast majority of the companies out there, and I'm, I'll tell you, over 95 percent, you know, truly cannot pin down the profitability of their pricing, uh, measure the results of their pricing all the way down to a truck or in a load, and be able to tell the difference between using an owner-operator truck or a company truck or using a short-haul truck versus a long-haul truck or some different kinds of combinations that make your trucks cost centers. And it astounds me. And we continue to pour technology on top of this. We've been, we've been pulled into technology. You know, so now I see companies letting te new technology divert their attention to best practices. And one of the most basic business best practices is understanding your cost. Time and time again, I see people you know, put off installing costing and the ability to pull all the information together uh, because there's, they, they're hell-bent on installing you know, people net and, and still are not using their operating system in an efficient, accurate, and timely fashion or liar in real time. You know, so the basis for their information is not accurate and they're, and they're pouring technology on top of that before they fix that problem. And underneath all that, you've got to understand your costs. You know, if, if, you're trying to run the business for a profit, my God, you know, you've, you've got to be able to understand your costs in order to determine what that is. Otherwise, the technology turns into a recording device and not a management tool. The other thing is a mindset that's been around the industry a long, long, long time and start to break. We're seeing you know, signs of it with most carriers we're talking to. You can no longer afford a one driver, one truck policy. You just can't do it. Trucks belong to the company. You're going to have to learn to slip seat trucks either because drivers are on vacation or because you've gone out and sold something that you can operate second shifts. Or you've gone out and sold something that you can operate at night, you know, and, and reman those trucks. It has a huge impact on profit, okay? And, you know, the drivers, properly explained, drivers go along with it. And a customer's not the problem, okay? The problem is the mindset of the trucking company that's, you know, for so long thinking that it's tied to driver turnover and customers won't go along with this kind of stuff. Sometimes customers have to be sold on it and not everything can be slip seated. I understand that. But we're going to show you the uh, profit impact of that and it's huge, okay, even if just 10% of your fleet. The other thing is, you know, good communications keep drivers, uh, you know, and that, that's all the way from when you're communicating with them before they come to your company and get them to come in uh, as, as a prospect for a job and be considered that they are going to be an employee and they're maintained and treated and communicated with as an employee. Okay? Good communications keep drivers. That's, why, that's what drives turnover. You know, once you equalize uh, earnings, drivers leave because they don't feel they have value and they don't feel like they're going, not, they know what's going on and no one communicates with them and treats them as an equal. Good communications keep drivers. Um, and when you're talking to customers and we all need to have the ability to negotiate, the person with the best information is the one who's going to win the negotiations. And that's what having good costing information 
based technology will do for you. Uh, it puts you in a much better negotiating tool. And these are, these are things, weaknesses that we see consistently in the industry, and these are the things that we have to overcome if you're going to succeed in the marketplace of the future, which is going to be dependent on solving all of those issues. Okay? You know, and, you know, I know it's a big challenge. You know, the industry, you know, has invested all kinds of technology. And my God, you know, we've got information coming at us from all sources, okay? And it's sometimes just absolutely overwhelming. I understand that, you know, and and because we walk into companies time after time after time, and people, the ownership says to us, you know, we're not. I've invested two hundred fifty, five hundred thousand dollars in this technology, and I've never gotten a return on my investment. It, it doesn't. It's nothing but a, a recording device after the fact. There's nothing. There's nothing real time or live or good about the information of the reports, and that's not the fault of the technology. That's the fault of how you turn it into something that is both a data tool, but also has the ability to organize that data and selected information into focused reporting. And that's where business intelligence comes, comes together. Okay? You want to be able to take all this information and roll it into something. Okay? So good business intelligence turns data into information. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay. So, solutions. <clears throat> Again, getting back to understanding your cost. You, you've got to understand your profitability and your pricing and what's required to generate the right return on investment. We've got to start thinking in our sales and our operations department about profit and enough profit to justify the investment. We're a capital intensive industry, yet most of the people who are taking your orders, planning your orders, implementing, managing your drivers, and managing your trucks are service and customer and load conscious, but have little idea of what the impact is on revenue and profit. They've not been raised that way, they're not trained that way, and when you don't have good information to measure them by, you know, they don't change until you change. So we've got to think in terms of increasing the productivity of trucks and operation. This is, again, capital intensive business, and the capital is are the trucks and the trailers, and they have to generate the revenue, and that's the they generate by most industries a very large gross margin as a contribution to your fixed expense. So the more you increase the productivity of your trucks, it's the fastest thing and most effective thing you can do to impact the bottom line. Far more effective than constantly trying to figure out where you can save bucks in your fixed cost structure, in operations and you know, administration and so on. And so. And in order also to have more trucks in operation, you've got to learn how to fill your empty trucks with other carriers' drivers. And that's a harsh statement. But the fact is, there's going to be a lot of carriers uh, who will continue to fail and or consolidate with other carriers. And, uh, and if you're a small company or a medium-sized company you don't have the resources to go out and, and you get all these different segments of new business, you're going to have to concentrate on other, other carriers' best drivers and, and driver schools. And that'll be a subject of future program in this series, okay? So when it boils down to it, though, here's what it boils down to. First of all, your sales and your operating staff must understand profitability, okay, and costs. So we're going to talk about costs. And the only thing we really, the way we have to demonstrate this, because there aren't that many systems out there, uh, and we're not trying to turn this into a commercial, but we've got to use our own tool to talk about this, which is true costing, your road to profit. Okay, uh, so let's talk about costing. Um, what what this is is an activity-based costing for trucking. Uh, it's a cost modeling tool, a pricing tool, an analysis tool, and consequently a management information tool. And what it does, it gives you the ability to measure the profit and cost of a trip all the way down to a single truck. And you can put that truck in a trip with a customer, different equipment combinations, different lanes, and various degrees of profitability. So that's what true costing does. The way it does it is it you know, pulls data. You establish a model. Uh, and this does not require interface with your software, but it, it interacts with it by establishing a model and pulling data into that model from your operating system and from your accounting system. Okay. 
uh, and that's done you know, by drawing extract files from the accounting system and expanding the trial balance and the chart of accounts so that there are <clears throat> numbers that match up with the productivity numbers that we're trying to measure in the operating system. And when that's done, okay, we also can pull data from other sources. Uh, if, for example, your maintenance system uh, is not integrated and you're expensing parts and services as you pay for them instead of as they're applied to a truck, uh, we could go into the maintenance program and actually pull the individual cost data on individual trucks, you know, into that equation so we can measure it. If, if people know that some system like that uh, is not integrated with the operating system and, and still it has the, act, the truck activity recorded on it, we can go to that and pull it into the model and get all the way down to the load level. So it's an extremely uh, effective and that has a great ability to drill down you know, and supply very accurate data all the way down to the load level. So the unique features are it's, it, it has the ability to establish KPIs what we, that we call vital signs for every side, segment of your business, okay? Um, so you can measure, you know, and when you start measuring things, <laughs> they, they improve. Uh, it measures the profitability of your pricing. It gives you the ability to drill all the way down to a single truck. Uh, it'll give you the ability to uh, determine if your fuel surcharge is compensatory, uh, different equipment combinations, yeah, and it can the pricing can be adjusted from from averages, which is what KPIs give you, uh, to actuals you know, in a given situation, and it will also measure you know the profit effect of increased productivity. So, plus, yeah, it'll give you the uh, the impact on pricing of uh, decisions versus the actual operations. In other words, you you can price something out, you can save that model that you've adjusted to the situation and go back and compare it at a, at a future date. It operates uh, off of this principle. Um, you have to be able to measure the effect of time and distance. And when you do that, and everything is equated to, to the mile, it distorts because the longer it takes for the shock, the more fixed cost you have to absorb. So what we do is, uh, we take your variable expense and we measure it by the mile. And then we take your fixed expense and we sign a burden rate for each operating truck for the day or for the hour, whatever that takes. And that gives us the ability to measure the effect of time and distance. And we organize your data in the cost centers so that, you know, like company trucks would be a cost center or operators would be a cost center uh, if you had long haulers or short haul, those could be, if you had dedicated trucks, anything can be a cost center where the footprint of the tractor is different either for a, you know, a physical reason, you know, day caps versus sleepers, uh, or for a uh, length of haul reason, or an ownership reason, company versus contractor. Uh, all those are determined based on how your company is structured. So once that's done, you know, and we're looking, for example, at a trip, and we want to apply both variable and fixed cost to that trip. Well, you always know the miles and you know the revenue, but the big question is, what's the impact of time, okay? So here's a model where there's a variable cost, and variable costs are, are those expenses that you incur when you move the truck. Fuel, typically driver pay, or your base, uh, maintenance expense, you know, uh, uh, like parts, outside services, tires, anything that you wear out, road expense, tolls, uh, or incur uh, as a result of moving that truck is a variable expense. Everything else is fixed, okay? So this, uh, this company has a variable expense of 89 cents a mile, and it has a fixed expense of uh, $168 per day on this trip. So when you look at the trip, and they say that trip takes you because of hours of service, and, and you reasonably good plan, it takes you 48 hours, okay? So you have $1,250 worth of revenue, you'd have variable costs of 916.70, that's the, the miles times the variable expense, and you'd have fixed costs of 336, which would be the $168, and since 48 hours of two days, it's double that, and shows that, yeah, you're not quite at break even. Uh, and on the other hand, if you were to accomplish that trip through better planning, and or application of assets like drop traders and stuff like that, but let's just say, say better planning, Okay, uh, and you get that down to 44 hours. Well, the variable revenue doesn't change, the variable expenses don't change, but the you know the fixed costs went down. 
and consequently shows a profit. And by the same token, if it took longer, you're going to have a loss. And the only thing that has really changed here is the application of a fixed expense due to time. So that's the, the basics of this thing. Now, when we, when we try to use this then as a pricing tool, let's say we want to determine you know, what, uh, what the outbound leg would have to be to make the trip yield an 8% net before tax profit. So you just simply plug in like a 92% operating ratio. And it shows that uh, instead of 725 on that outbound leg, we should have charged $796 to get trip revenue of 1276, yielding a profit of 102, which is 8%. So that's how it kind of backs in to be a pricing tool. Um, the, then when you get into it at, at the next level, uh, what you want to be able to do is organize your financial data, uh, and it's uploaded into the model. And this was uh, typically what your trial balance would look. We, we take the P&L section out of your trial balance, and we organize it over here you know, by categories. And for example, this is going to be revenue company trucks, revenue, revenue lease operators, and then you've got you know, your variable expense. You've got what, what could be termed here as, as semi-fixed expenses. Okay, Usually those relate to maintenance. And then you've got fixed. And, and you click on each of these categories, and it's going to show you all the trial balance accounts that are behind that. So this whole thing ties with your trial balance. And when you get done, it also ties to uh, your P&L. And these are cost centers across the top. Now, in this case, they're terminals. Uh, they could be company trucks. They could be contractor trucks. They could be dedicated trucks. They could be local or OTR. Uh, they could be any number of things, whatever, whatever the way your company is structured. But when you click on any one of these, uh, it's then going to take us down to that cost center level, and it's going to give you the same P&L facts. But now it starts to take critical data and organize it into factors that can be measured so that we can come up, for example, with what is the variable cost per mile, if that's how we want to measure it, and what is the burden rate per day, you know, based on actual data, okay, to establish that standard. You know, so it, um, and in all cases, this is going to tie to your to your balance sheet. So, yeah, the other thing is that for pricing purposes, this can be organized in such a way that, for example, things like you know it may be semi-fixed expenses or some expenses that you don't incur all the time as a variable can be set aside and only applied when they're applicable. Like, for example, let's say you've got a fuel or a a toll expense on an average of ten cents a mile. And you've got a pricing trip coming up, and you're going to be crossing some bridges. So you pull the average out of there and reapply the actual number to make that trip you know, fit. And you can do that with your fixed expenses as well as your variable expenses, and and refine this down to the point where it's uh, as as close as the as the information that you put into it. You know, very very thorough. Okay. So next step, though. Is you know is the ability to measure things, okay? And what this has is a system uh, that once you get it to this point, you've got your information organized, and you're able to define uh, goals or standards where you want to make comparisons against uh, previous numbers. Uh, vital signs will allow you to establish KPIs on just about everything. So in this particular case, here we have all of these terminals. And these are their, their overall P&L, you know, for these months. And if they hit the mark, uh, then they would, uh, you know, or, or, or went over it, it was up, you know, you'd get a green arrow. If there was under the mark, you know, you'd get a red arrow. And if there was a goal involved, uh, and it wasn't just measuring against a past number, uh, you can actually have a star indicator here so you know just exactly, you know, what's going on. So then you can take these to just about to any level that you want. You know, for example, you can then go from this into KPIs uh, that drill down. In this particular case, you're into a terminal here. Uh, you're looking at our cost center. You're looking at loads. You know, you're looking at load miles. You're looking at you know line haul revenue. You're looking at fuel surcharge. You look at anything that you want 
And if you set a KPI or a measurement standard, it's going to come back and it's going to measure that. So management, on as often as they want to upload the data, uh, can look at and measure these things extremely accurately uh, daily and hourly. Okay, uh, and, and literally in any department where you are, have the ability to set a standard and establish a, a KPI to measure it. So this is a very, very thorough uh, you know, management information tool. Um, and so if you want to drill down and you, at one terminal and you want to look at one particular point and you click on that, you can then drill down into all of the data behind it. And let's, let's say, for example, uh, it's customer data. And you want to look at you know, their, uh, their, their trip activity okay, and the profitability. So here we have a list of customers in that cost center. And over here, uh, we have you know, the results of those customers over a given period of time as to whether or not they're profitable or not. And all kinds of indicators across the top that will give us you know, some indication as to what's affecting that. So <clears throat> again, um, if I click on, one, on, the, on the left, on, on the, say on, like on any one of the customers, I'm going to start drilling down into the data that's behind that line item, okay, and all the way down into the loads. Uh, if I click on the top categories, I'm going to have the ability to look at ascending and descending values. So I can look at the very best or the very worst under any of those categories, and it'll, it'll, uh, it, it'll organize the data that way. So let's say I, I want to click on drill down on one, one, two, three warehousing as an account. Okay. So the next step is it's going to show me and start breaking down those loads by origin and destination. Okay, and in this case, uh, we're looking at you know 429 loads, and uh, for this one customer, and whether or not it was profitable, and this is true for all of those customers. And again, I can click on the top, and I can take any of those categories, whether it's fuel surcharge, you know, whether it's miles, whether or not it's, it's uh, you know revenue, uh, gross margin, and I can determine based on high and low what the contribution is and I start getting indicators as to why an account may be possible. So I can drill down further, and let's say I want to get down to the load level. Okay, So here's four trips, all basically the same trip at different times on different trucks. And in one case, uh, the, there's a low profit on the trip. You know, so when you start looking at it and you're doing the analysis of it, it comes back and it tells you, OK, it's not, it's not, it's not pricing. Pricing is just the way it's supposed to be. What it was was a post-load deadhead you know, was, not, was not what it should be. In other words, they diverted a truck and went someplace with it other than they planned and resulted in that. So here you have a tool uh, that will analyze your customers. It will analyze your lanes. It will analyze all the way down to, you know, to a cost center, whether it's a terminal or type of truck. And it will drill all the way down to the truck and measure the profitability of that truck and all its related activity, like loads, okay, who, who it's been assigned to. Very, very powerful, okay. And organizing, again, data coming from your operating system and your trial balance and onboard communications and or maintenance or any peripheral data that on the outside that you have to put into it, truly focused on giving you an overall picture of the profitability of your pricing and be able to measure the productivity and profit of your operating decisions. Okay, so in effect, what you wind up with uh, is a um, what we call, you know, a, a a pricing process. Okay, so let's say you get a rate quote request. Okay, then you now have a model, pricing model that you can go to, and you can adjust it, you know, to based on assumptions. So if the if the if the indicators there need to, like the tools we were talking about before, need to be tweaked so they're reflective of the actual situation rather than the average, uh, you can do that. So you wind up there with a rate, and you can then run your loads with that rate. Okay, and then you can go back and you can review the against the assumptions because when you do that adjustment, you're able to save that that load layout 
and put it into a file and come back and review it against the way you planned it, not necessarily the way it's being reported by the system. And then if there's a need to adjust, you know, you know what that need is. So it's a rate review process, and that's a unique feature of this because of all the information that it has in it. And, and you know, when it comes to pricing, it, it, then it makes pricing pretty simple because let's say you, know, you get a, a request and you can define that trip by a Zipper City. Uh, and you can also define how you want the pricing structured, whether it's per hundred weight, point to point, whatever the factor is. You can also plug in a desired profit level, or it will come back and tell you what the profit is of existing pricing if that's what you're trying to compare your cost to. Okay, and so it's going to then once you got to that desired profit, it's then going to kind of come back and it's going to define a trip and give you the miles in accordance to whatever standard you measure. And then it's going to spill out and it's going to give you your cost and the results of your pricing. And it's going to break out fuel surcharge from that equation so you can see if it's compensatory. And you can determine, for example, do you want to roll that into the price for the customer's convenience or, or quote it separately. But for your purposes, it splits that out so you know if you have a compensatory fuel surcharge situation, which is crucial in today's market. Okay? Uh, so when, when you're done, also it, it gives you the ability to apply either post-load deadhead or pre-load deadhead to the trip. Uh, and rather than the, the way the operating system just automatically does it is by assigning it to the next load. Uh, so this is a you know, hugely effective tool. So essentially, when you're done, um, you can save it. You click a button. And then all of a sudden, you know, all that data that's, and everything behind it that you've saved is in an Excel format someplace so you can go back and resurrect it and actually compare the results against your pricing. So uh, getting back to what we started to talk about, reminders, <laughs> your, your sales and operating staff have got to understand profitability and costs going forward. Uh, sales has to understand the profitability of what they're selling, the operating department has to understand what's necessary to operate that load in a way that it, it generates the desired profit, you know, based on in productivity, effective use of equipment, uh, assets, drivers, the whole nine yards. So in that process, you've got certain things that, that you want to consider that have the greatest impact on the bottom line. Among them are fuel surcharge management. Uh, a huge one is the ability to reduce deadhead and increasing driver to truck ratio to increase profit, that's huge too. And having your operations department and your drivers uh, keyed into productivity incentives <coughs> and, and measuring them against standards uh, in order to make them profit conscious, okay, because their decisions impact profit and the profit impacts their compensation and maybe whether or not to get a promotion in the future, okay? So we're going to look at some of these independently. I guess the first one we're going to look at is the, uh, the impact of uh, reduced deadhead, okay? And going back to that same little trip example that we were talking about, except in this particular case, this is a shorter trip. This is a trip that you can, you know, turn the truck in a day at a single shift. And the initial setup was, that there was 85 miles uh, of deadhead uh, at 16.7 cent, which is effectively is right around a 500 mile trip, okay? And it's generating a profit of 4.5%. Now, if you could reduce the deadhead 15 miles, 15 miles, and that drops the deadhead percentage to 12.4, the impact on the bottom line, if you will notice, is over three percentage points. It's huge. If we talk about deadhead, it is hands down one of the biggest ways to impact your bottom line. The fact is, if you improve your deadhead by 4%, you'll increase not I'm not talking about just growth. I'm talking about bottom line. You'll increase your bottom line percentage, profit percentage, by about 3%. It's huge. Okay? It's just big. Um, now, 
let's talk about slip seating. Um, and this is a controversial subject. So let's have a little poll here. Lisa, if you'll open up the polls, I'd like to know how many of you are regularly slip seating some of your trucks. Not all of your trucks, just some of your trucks. Please, please answer that poll. Well, okay, uh, it used to be, and we, when we ask this, literally everyone would be saying no. And the last couple years, you know, all of a sudden we're seeing carriers trying it. And in this case, for this audience, we actually have 67% of you say in some form you're, you're slip seating. Right? And that may be due to the smallest. Typically what we're finding now is that when we ask that question, 25 to, to, to a third of the companies out there are now realizing the impact of this and actually slip seating the trucks and overcoming you know, the mindset that customers won't go along with this and, and drivers won't go along with it. They will. And it has a, has a huge impact on profit. Let's just let's look at an example here, okay? Um, this, again, uh, short trip. and. Uh, you know, you can return the truck in a single shift. That's that's the simplest uh, type situation to slip seat the truck where you have access to it uh, in order to turn it again and, change, and swap out the driver. And uh, in this particular case, you know, you had using drop traders uh, in doing this thing in a single shift at 11.8 hours. You know, it generated a profit of 4.7 percent, which you know, in a lot of, a lot of people's minds is pretty respectable. It's it's still not enough. And then when you run that truck up on the second shift, what happens is, is the burden rate was absorbed in the first shift. So you've got a, a net margin on the bottom for that trip, standalone. But the second shift when you run it, the gross margin from that second trip drops to the bottom line and blends with the net margin of the first, and you get a blend. And it's huge. Now, if your dry freight operation, that gross margin percentage could be like 35%. And that's about what this one is. Uh, if you're uh, any kind of a bulk carrier and you've got you know, higher fixed costs, consequently higher gross margins, the impact is even greater. You know, it could be you would wind up with 21, 22, 24 percent on a blend. So you don't have to, and that gives you the ability to uh, incentivize both customers and drivers with that money on that second shift. You don't have to make 19 percent to have a good good business. Um, and you don't have to do this with all of your all of your uh, your trucks. You know, and but typically slip seating is a uh, a local strategy and uh, you gotta you know manage your drivers and which is what well, hours of service are trying to tell you around a five day week. Uh, and then you can have part time drivers or floaters, you know, to run it for the six to seven days or uh, you have you know, more than one driver per truck you know, in a slip seat environment. So there's different ways to phase into this thing. But the fact is, if you only slip seat 10% of your trucks, you'll increase your bottom line again by two percentage points. And these are these are statistics that we've worked out over the years you know, that are real because we they're based on clients' actual results. So, okay, in, inadequate fuel surcharge. This this is a biggie, okay, in addition to that. Uh, the symptoms of this are uh, using your customer's uh, percentage rate, uh, using your customer's fuel peg, uh, rolling fuel surcharges into rates. Those are all tactics that customers use that favor them in the long run because in the long run, fuel continues to go up and will in the future too. So being able to split that out and have information uh, in which which to org to negotiate it, and the, and the negotiator who has the information, remember, is the best negotiator. Because when you start talking about fuel surcharge, yeah, you know, this is this is, I mean, it's a this is a commodity, and this has got to get passed through, and the shipper's got to realize that he if he's you know negotiating to his advantage at some, at some particular point, he's impacting. Uh, and, and creating an unprofitable situation, and a source like security is going to go away, especially in today's environment where there's a shortage of trucks and drivers. 
not a shortage of trucks, but there's a shortage of drivers. There's a shortage of capacity, and, and this will continue into the future. So when you look at this example, okay, here you've got you know, a short haul trip, and the fuel surcharge rate at that time was supposed to be 28%. Okay, so it is, and uh, so the rate, you know, plus fuel surcharge, and where the fuel surcharge is an add-on is 400 bucks, and that's where you should be looking at your your pricing and your cost. You should separate fuel surcharge. Fuel surcharge should be a credit to your fuel expense when you're looking at it from a costing standpoint. Now the return trip of 250 from a broker. Fuel surcharge rolled in, right? So theoretically, there's zero. Well, you've got to back that out. So when you apply the 28% of this, you find out that that actual rate is only $180. So you've got a situation here that you know, if you have to adjust for it, it impacts the load. And instead of having a situation where fuel surcharge was even on both legs of the trip with a profit of 4.5%, uh, you now have a situation where the revenue for the trip is only $580 and actually a 7% loss. Now look at that. That's an 11.5% swing because there was no fuel surcharge on the backhaul. Man, I tell you, it's huge. When we have clients that take on true costing, uh, typically the first thing that pays for the investment uh, over a period of just a couple of months uh, it is uh, finding out what they're doing to themselves with fuel surcharge, okay, and correcting. And, it's, and when you've got information, uh, it's correctable because you can negotiate because you've got information, okay? So compensatory fuel surcharge is the fastest way in order to uh, impact that. Now, the other, other fastest way to impact your bottom line you know, is to be able to uh, have more drivers to fill empty trucks. And we just don't have enough, okay? Uh, it's, it's very expensive, and people don't really have much of a way to measure it. So we put together a tool based on a model that we have we're going to be looking at called uh, you know, our, our mock-up trucking company to establish it. We'll show you some stats here. Okay, let's, let's take a company that's got about 250 trucks, owner-operators and contractors, okay? And they have 10 empty trucks because of the driver shortage, which is pretty common right now, okay? And uh, about 5%. And they have a turnover rate for the drivers of 85%, a little bit less than what the national standard average is now. And contractors is 20%. And it takes 30 days to reseat a truck, okay? So, uh, and then they have a, a budget, a recruiting budget each month. And that's advertising, that's staff, that's uh, testing, and you know, orientation, all that kind of good stuff. You know, so it's it's a, it's like like twenty twenty nine thousand dollars a month. Okay. Well, here's where the big items are. Um, the lost gross profit when you're turning, you're reseating that truck for thirty days because the truck is sitting. You're still paying for it. The lost the lost contribution, the profit is eighty nine thousand dollars in a typical dry freight operation. Much more in a bulk operation. And for the 10 trucks that are parked empty, again, they're paying, you know, the fixed, co the fixed cost is there, so the gross margin drops to the bottom line, and the lack of gross margin is $73,000. You, you roll those costs together, and this is huge. I mean, it's costing, you know, bottom line profit a couple percentage points. So empty trucks are huge. This is going to be a subject of a future webinar, okay, that we talk about. And uh, but let's let's see how this all works for a little thing we have called mock-up trucking. So you're just going to have to bear with me here for a second because I have to pull something else up. And what this is is uh, our little uh, make-believe trucking company. Okay, uh, what we've done here, and this is a little bit confusing. Let me just explain explain it to you. Um, we have taken uh, and built a mock trucking company, okay? And up here on the top, this uh, these are all stats and results that we can measure productivity and driver pay and deadhead and all that kind of good stuff. And we can also, you know, plug in miles and revenue per mile and deadhead and that drives the revenue. And then all of the variable expenses and we got have, we have different cost centers set up here. OTR company 
you know, short haul company, multi shift trucks, those are slip seat trucks, got some owner operators over here. Um, and then all those variable expenses are driven by factors, and they give us a gross margin for each cost center and a cost per mile. And then all of the, the fixed costs for the departments is driven by factors such as how many people work there, how much their average pay, line item expenses. So we, we can build a model that's rep, that replicates just about any company. And what we have here is a company that's got a couple, you know, a couple hundred trucks and is losing money. So this is very confusing to look at all this. So we're going to look at this summary. And this summarizes the whole thing. Uh, these are the trucks up here by cost center. Uh, and these are how many are actually operating, you know, like 92% due to schedule time off or else lack of drivers. So some trucks are sitting. And these are the miles per day in each cost center that are operating. And these are the fuel surcharge rates, okay? And these are the deadhead ratios. And right down here, you've got the revenue per mile as a result of that. And driver pay rates. And here's what the drivers are, are uh, earning, okay? And so that all that drives revenue. And it drives overall the variable expense of that model I showed you. And these are the results here, okay? Well, here's what the gross margins are. And here's after applying all the fixed expenses, here's what the profits are for each cost center, resulting in an operating profit of, of a negative $13,000, even though the bottom line, based on gain of sale of assets, shows a profit, okay, which is not, not a real operating profit. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at this down to the operating profit level and we're going to see if some of the principles that we've applied here, what they can do to impact it, and this little model is going to show us. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to observe this, and we're going to see here, hey, you know, we have uh, contractor equipment and company equipment, and the company trucks run 450 miles, okay, at a lesser rate per mile and a higher deadhead than the company owner-operator trucks do, okay? So we're going to say, okay, you know, uh, I don't care who owns a truck. If you've got owner-operator trucks or company trucks, if it doesn't get the, the revenue per day that it needs, sooner or later it's going to go away. So we're going to equalize this. We're going to say, okay, all the trucks are treated the same. We're going to get you know, like 450 miles out of the contract of trucks. Okay? Uh, we're going to equalize the deadhead. So now it's going to be 14% for both instead of 15 and 13. Yeah. And uh, you know, voila, all of a sudden, I just took over $10,000 out of my loss just by equalizing those trucks. And the impact was, since the gross margin on company trucks is greater, uh, and and you're use, if you're using those trucks to do the things the owner operators won't, you're penalizing yourself when you equalize this and treat them to both, which is only fair. The owner operators are still making a good earning and the, the drivers are making about $950 a week, which is, you know, average, not where it should be, okay, but we'll, we'll get it there based on increased productivity. So then I say to myself, okay, all right, let's look at that, that deadhead issue. I got 14% deadhead here in a long haul situation, over 500 miles, 20% short haul, 25% on my short, and, and, and over here I've got contract. Let's Let's just drop that deadhead by better planning and better sales to 12% on the overall over-the-road situation. Again, look at oh, I, I, I swung from a $2,000 loss to a $15,000 profit. Okay, just just for that. And when I adjust the deadheads with these, and this drops to 18, and this drops say, say to 23, look at the impact on the profit, just on deadhead. All of a sudden, I'm making 3%. I've go, gone from a $13,000 loss to a $43,000 profit, okay? And, okay, so now let's think in terms of, okay, let's talk about, um, you know, fuel, fuel surcharge, not a factor here. It's the same, so I can't do anything any better there unless it turns out that my fuel surcharge isn't where it should be, and let's just hypothetically say it was 2% less because of manipulation by the customers. So let's say 
in that time, it should have been 30%. Okay? I, I just impacted my bottom line by another $30,000. Okay? And when I start then turning around and looking at productivity, and I realize that with, with 11 hours to drive, and if I'm in an environment where I'm averaging, say, 58 miles per hour, why can't I get over 500 to 550 miles per day per truck with good planning? And, and pricing, where I negotiate with a customer or detention, you know, after an hour, equates to the same revenue that I get from a truck and what I have to pay the driver. Why, why can't I do that? The only reason I don't do that is either I don't sell it right or I don't operate it right. Okay? So let's say I'm going to get back to operating this right, and I'm going to get you know, 500 miles a day out of a road truck. Whoops, not 500, 5,600. I'm going to get 500 miles per day out of a road truck. And, <laughs> and I still don't know how to do that very well. And then I'm going to get the same thing out of the owner-operator's truck. Okay? Now, over here in my short haul, at least I'm going to get 450 out of that. Okay? And over here where I'm slip seating trucks, I'm slip seating trucks and I'm not even doubling revenue. You know, I'm getting like 40% increase. And let's say I'm going to slip seat that truck and I'm going to get like nine, at least $900 per day. And I want to point out to you, I now have a company that's generating an 8% net before tax profit, operating profit, um, before gain on sale of assets. And this is where we should be. At 6% even, you're only generating a 10% return on your investment, typically if you're buying your own trucks. So this, this is huge. And, and these are the things, these are far more impactful than trying to go through that model and save money by cutting staff and doing all this and that. You go through that exercise, and if you can take one or one and a half percent out of your cost in the bottom line, you're lucky. You know, and and but the most and sooner or later you want to do that, but the most impact is first of all, your equipment has got to be effective and your equipment has got to be profitable. So with that in mind, okay, I want to switch back to our slide program here. And so I've got to get out of this. And okay, let's just switch back real quick. So what you're talking about here is a profit culture versus a service culture. You can have both. We're famous for our service culture, but we need to be we need to be profit conscious. And oftentimes that means you're going to have to change how your operating organization thinks and their philosophy, you know, because we, we see that most central dispatch and or what we call central control departments, great service culture, people there are operating without understanding the impact of their decisions, both for cost or stock, is never trained that way, okay? And, you know, so this oftentimes is a, a, a culture change, and it means that your operating system is the tool uh, your, your enterprise system can't be just a, a recording device. It's got to be a management tool, and that means it's got to be current, and it's got the information's got to be accurate, real time, and it's got to be, you know, and you've got to have a team that's conscious of that and keeps it up to date and costing to measure your decisions. And then you've got to start thinking in terms of revenue per truck per day based on the number of trucks operating. That is the first and foremost KPI you should be keeping if you've got a you know, some kind of a uh, dashboard up there, and you're measuring these things. That's the biggie, okay? And to do that, you've got two things you've got to have that's effective. You've got to enter the data live and complete at, at, at each transaction, whether it's driver input or through, through Qualcomm or something that's on the truck. Uh, it's got to be accurate. It's got to be complete, and you've got to organize your department to do that. And typically, most departments are not organized that way, the way your system is designed, all enterprise systems, they're designed with the idea behind a customer service rep, managing customer relations, driver managers, managing drivers, a specific group of supervisors, and in between, a planner supervisor who's planning for productivity. So customer service accepts and plans loads in cooperation with the planner, and that plan is turned over to driver managers who then manage the drivers and the trucks in the fulfillment of the plan. Okay? All of this will be the subject of one of our next programs in our series. So with that in mind, 
Uh, we're going to, at this point, pause for questions. Lisa, is anyone asking questions? I do not have any questions at this time. Okay, there are no bad questions, and you can raise your hand uh, you know, on, your, on your computer, and Lisa will take your question and we'll respond to it. We, we don't open the mics up because it just creates too much confusion. So if you, if you have a question, again, no, this is all anonymous. There are no bad questions out there. Anybody? Well, if that's the case, I would like to say that uh, thank you for attending our program. Uh, it's wrapped up. Uh, you can get a lot more information on our website. Uh, this, this program uh, ultimately uh, will be posted uh, either on, on YouTube through our website. Uh, so you can get your people together and you can review it. Uh, and we also will be contacting you in order to get your input. You know, we do these programs now on a regular basis, and this is the first in a series of four. Um, your input's very important. In fact, uh, since this is free, I'll put a guilt trip on you. You're going to get a, a request after the program is over to do a completed survey. We look at those very carefully. Uh, I would ask you to please do that. And, uh, and an individual in our company by the name of Jim Swain, our Vice President of Business Development, will be calling you personally uh, in order to get your input okay, and see if we can be of any service. So that's what we're here for. And uh, go to our website, www.trincon.com. And if there are no questions, Lisa, no questions? I don't have any right now. Okay. Thank, folks, that's the end of our webinar, and thank you for attending.